Ida for not wanting to attend my sister's wedding because she made me dye my hair? The morning of my sister's wedding, I stood in front of the mirror, half laughing, half sobbing at the reflection staring back at me. My once bright chestnut hair, which I'd lovingly nurtured with a concoction of organic oils and an excessive number of hair masks, was now a shade of pumpkin orange that screamed, I've made some poor life choices. But what was I supposed to do? My sister Gemma had been adamant that I match her wedding theme, which she had decided was autumnal chic. Apparently, that meant everyone should look like they were auditioning for a community theater production of Hocus Pocus. Seriously? I muttered, brushing through the tangled mess of my new hair. Was orange really the only option? I had been an awkward kid, the middle child in a family where my older sister and younger brother were always better at everything sports, grades, and definitely social skills. But hair dyeing? This was my domain. I had finally figured out how to navigate life as the quirky, artsy sister, complete with a tasteful collection of vintage clothes, an adorable Instagram account dedicated to my crafts, and a color palette that worked. Then, I met my sister's obsessive wedding planning and felt myself being pulled into a whirlwind that I could never keep up with. The morning chaos of the wedding was typical my mother's frantic voice echoing through the house as she tried to locate Emma's something borrowed, my brother pretending he was a professional videographer with his new camera, and me, standing there looking like a lost traffic cone. I couldn't help but wonder if it was too late to book a spontaneous trip to the mountains instead of attending my sister's wedding. Come on, Bella. Just a little longer, Emma chirped from the other room, her excitement bubbling over like an uncapped soda. I wished I could share her enthusiasm but all I could think about was how much I missed my own hair. Dyeing my hair orange wasn't the worst thing that could happen, I rationalized. But it felt like a betrayal of everything I was. I thought back to our childhood, those long summer days spent painting in the backyard and making promises to each other about being there, no matter what. Emma had always been the picture-perfect older sister getting straight A's, dating the best guys, and always making the right decisions. Meanwhile, I was the one who accidentally dyed my own hair green during an art project, mistaking paint for hair dye. But that was different. I had done that for myself. This felt like a prison sentence served in a shade of vivid orange. Bella. You ready yet? Emma called again, her voice filled with a blend of impatience and excitement. No I'm contemplating a life of solitude and silence. I yelled back, my humor half-heartedly disguising my inner turmoil. As I stepped out of the bathroom, I tried to give her the best sisterly support I could muster. She stood in her wedding dress, a flowing white creation that practically sparkled, contrasting sharply with my hair. She turned to me, her eyes wide with glee, and I could see that familiar determination in her expression. Okay, we're going to have the best day ever. She said, almost jumping up and down. You look amazing. Amazing? If amazing was code for you resemble a citrus fruit, then sure, I was nailing it. But how could I spoil her big day with my own grievances? The guilt of being the whiny sister who didn't like the hair color hung over me like a heavy cloud. The ceremony took place in the backyard, decorated with fairy lights and an abundance of dried leaves that somehow looked beautiful in a Pinterest board but felt decidedly I'm going to sneeze all day in reality. The guests were a mix of family and friends, all wearing tasteful autumn colors that enhanced their features and made me feel like I'd stumbled into a costume party meant for a different season entirely. As Emma walked down the aisle, I couldn't help but feel a flicker of pride. She looked radiant, and her happiness was contagious, even for someone with orange hair. I stood at the end of the aisle, fighting back tears as I watched her take those steps toward her future, my heart swelling with the realization that she was embarking on a new journey. But once the vows were exchanged, and the reception began, the reality of my hair returned with a vengeance. My mom nudged me, her eyes scanning the crowd, probably searching for any sign of judgment about my colorful transformation. Bella, don't. You think you could have added a little more brown? Maybe some highlights? She asked, her voice just loud enough for me to hear over the chatter. I forced a smile. Thanks, mom, but orange was the new brown this season. It's the in thing. I could feel my brother's quiet laughter as he captured the moment on video. You look like a traffic cone, Bella. Embrace it. He shouted, his mischievous grin lighting up his face. Traffic cone? I decided it was time to flip the script. At least I'll be easy to spot in case of an emergency. I shot back, raising my glass to my brother in mock salute. The reception continued with food, drinks, and awkward family dances. My hair was now a running joke my family teased me lovingly, and I found myself laughing along with them, even if it felt a little hollow. I was determined to make the best of it, but every time I caught a glimpse of myself in a reflective surface, I couldn't help but cringe. Then came the speeches. My brother went first, talking about how Emma had always been the perfect sister and how I was the quirky one who kept things interesting. And look at her today. 
Just look at her. He exclaimed, gesturing wildly at me. She's a beacon of orange light, guiding us all. The laughter erupted around the room, and I felt my cheeks flush. I raised my glass again, joining in the laughter even as I felt the familiar pinch of insecurity. Thanks, bro. Glad to be a guiding light. Next time, I'll choose green. I shouted, prompting another wave of laughter that made the sting of embarrassment almost bearable. As the night wore on, I watched as Emma and her new husband danced under the twinkling lights, lost in their own world. That joy brought a warmth to my heart, but I couldn't help feeling like I was fading into the background. All eyes were on the couple, while I felt like an overcooked carrot in a beautiful salad. In that moment, I decided to step outside for a breather. The cool night air wrapped around me, refreshing and calming. I leaned against the porch railing, looking out into the starry sky. It was quiet, just the sound of laughter and music drifting in from inside. Hey, Orange Crush. You out here? A voice called. I turned to see Jake, one of Emma's friends, walking toward me with a grin. Orange Crush? I raised an eyebrow, trying to keep my tone playful. Is that your way of flirting with me or just commenting on my hair? He laughed, leaning against the railing beside me. Honestly? A little bit of both. But seriously, you're rocking that look. I mean, who else could pull off such a bold statement? It's like you're a walking sunset. Sunset? I snorted. More like a traffic cone gone rogue. Still, I admire your guts. Hair is hair. It grows back. But owning a moment like this? That's what truly matters. We fell into an easy conversation about life, love, and how ridiculous weddings could be. I found myself laughing, genuinely laughing, for the first time that day. You know, Jake said, leaning closer, I think you should really own that hair. You've got the spirit for it. Who cares what everyone else thinks? I care, I admitted, my voice dropping. It's just Emma is so perfect, and I feel like I'm always in her shadow. It's hard to celebrate her when I feel like this. Jake looked at me thoughtfully. You know, your hair is a bold choice, but it's also a reflection of you. You're not meant to blend in. You're meant to stand out. And right now, you're doing just that. Embrace it. His words struck a chord deep within me. Perhaps I was hiding behind my frustrations, letting the orange hair define my entire experience of the day instead of using it as a chance to shine. By the time we headed back inside, I felt lighter, ready to take on the rest of the night. As the clock ticked toward midnight, I danced with abandon, spinning and twirling, orange hair flying around me like confetti. I laughed until my sides hurt, forgetting about my insecurities as I immersed myself in the joy of the occasion. Emma caught my eye from across the room, and she beamed at me. In that moment, I saw her happiness reflected in my orange locks. I was her sister I was supporting her, celebrating her love, and choosing to embrace the unique parts of myself even if it came in a shade of bright orange. The night came to a close, and as I hugged Emma, I whispered, you look amazing. I hope you know how much I love you. She grinned, her eyes sparkling with unshed tears. I love you too, Bella. Thank you for being here. No matter what hair color you have. As I left the venue that night, I realized that the orange hair had become more than just a silly request from my sister. It represented the journey I had taken to find my voice in a world where I often felt invisible. Sure, it wasn't the hair I would choose every day, but it had become a reminder that love comes in many forms and sometimes, it's the quirkiest, most unexpected choices that bring the most joy. So, Ida for not wanting to attend my sister's wedding because she made me dye my hair? Perhaps I was at first, but as I left, I knew that I had transformed that hair color into something meaningful. And in the end, I learned that it's not just about the choices we make for others it's also about how we choose to embrace our unique selves, flaws and all. And if I could do that with orange hair, then maybe I could do it with anything.